Hi there, my name is Matthew Palmer and welcome to Digital Art Using Your iPad or Tablet Computer. In this course, I'm going to take you through every stage of learning how to paint on these wonderful portable computers. Let's get started. So, first of all, just to say that I am actually working on an iPad and the reason for this is because the apps available are so much more affluent and there's more of them slightly better than the Android apps. You can use the Android devices and get art apps like Sketchbook Pro, that kind of thing. There's many, many art apps available. The ones I'm going to focus on in this course is Brushes Redux or Brushes or Brushes 3. Brushes Redux is the current one as we stand here in January 2015. Procreate is also a very popular and very useful app. That's an app to purchase, but it's not a lot of money. The Redux, Brushes Redux is free, and that's the one that we're going to use. So we'll open this up and we'll go through some of the basics just to get you started, folks, and show you where to begin. So what we have, these paintings here are ones that have already been done by myself or ones that I've started. We've got a moonlit night there, which is really nice. You can see how we can zoom in close using the two fingers. Click the gallery to go back. We've got a sunset with a wonderful boat in the corner. And I will show you how to produce similar paintings as the lesson goes on. We have this wonderful Yorkshire Dales kind of Lakeland scene. Nice tree and building. Look how close you can zoom. We have the autumn wood, which is a wonderful picture. If you rotate the screen, it goes with it, by the way. Just look at the detail that you can produce. And then this is one that I'm actually still working on. This is a bit of a late district scene. If you are working on one and you want to continue, it says swipe to paint. That's all you do. Sometimes it's a little bit unresponsive, there you go. Swipe to paint and it kicks in so you can now work on it. But I want to show you how to get started using Brushes Redux. Just the basics, okay? So what we have is a plus in the corner, click the plus. You then get this option that says iPad Retina, that's because I am on a, a iPad Air, which is the current model, and it's got a Retina screen. It knows this, so it gives you the size. You can scroll backwards for iPad, that's the old iPad, the iPad 1, the iPad 2, iPhone 5, iPhone Retina, or if you keep going this way, you can add your own custom size. But I say go for the one that comes up as default. You can rotate it by clicking the little rotate button, which is here. Portrait, landscape. Let's go for a very basic landscape, and then click the word create and you get a blank piece of paper. Let's pinch backwards a little step and let's get you started with a basic, basic, never used it before picture. Bottom left you have a colour picker. The bottom left square, rectangular shape, tap it and it gives you this. The circle is where you choose the overall colour. So let's go for a blue sky, so somewhere in the blue. This slider here is the opacity. Make sure that is right at the highest point just to get you started, okay? So it's at the highest point possible. This big circle in the side of the round colour wheel is the colour that you've actually got. This square is where you choose the colour tone, you simply move it around. Had a funny moment then. Move it up to the top corner, that's the most intense colour. You get of course blacks here, you get whites there. I want to go for quite a nice blue, something like this. Click off it. Then I've chosen the colour. You can see now it's got the blue in the corner. I can then look at these two icons just to the side of this. We have brush and eraser. Brush is for adding colour, eraser is for deleting it. A big bonus of iPad painting is that you can correct your mistakes, which is wonderful. Then you've got the brush stroke. Now just to say, make sure you're on the brush, then click the brush stroke. Now this is the list of pre-installed brushes. You can add brushes to this. When you click add, it duplicates the current one because you can work on any one of those. You click add, it duplicates it. Why would you want to do this? Because you can click the word edit and you've got all these options to play with. Really clever little program, folks. Just use the standard top brush just to get you started, okay? And then we'll tap away to get rid of the box. So you click the brush stroke, 
choose the top one and tap away. This slider here goes from one pixel up to 512 pixels, somewhere about 100 to 200, so roughly 200 I've gone for on the size. Then I can use this stylus. Now this is a brush stylus. These are available from the website. Recommend these to anybody. The brush is not a normal paintbrush. They won't work. This is designed for a touch sensitive screen. The bottom has a soft kind of stylus for doing sketching and this side has a paintbrush for simply doing this folks. Go across the top. See the brush and keep going down. Don't take your stylus off the screen. Come down. Make it as dense as you like. You start painting. Excellent. Let's make a faded sky. So let's change the colour or the opacity. So I click back on the little bottom left corner, colour rectangle, and I come down to about, let's say, a third in. That's made the colour weaker. See how when I paint now, it's lighter. Keep going over the joining line. Can you see how it's starting to fade? Let's go a bit lighter again. And let's go even paler. Keep going over the same area again. Now, if you go, or if you look, can you see how it's quite stripy? But what we can do there is we can lower the opacity right down, really low. And then you can simply paint over, and it just kind of blends in the hard lines. It softens it out. If it's not working, add a little bit more opacity. Keep going, keep going, keep going and eventually it starts to smooth out. But what I'd like to do is I'd like to darken the corners. So I want to come back to the colour, increase the opacity, and can you see this colour spot? That's the blue you're working on. Bring it down towards the black. Darken the corners, the top corner. Lower the opacity, keep going, fade it down. So we're making it look more dramatic. Lower the opacity some more and you start to see a blend take place. Lower the opacity some more, you see even more of a blend taking place. And, and you can see I'm painting quite quickly as well. This is adding a very low opacity layer of colour, very weak, and it's, it's gradually adding a fraction at a time, probably 10% at a time, and it's starting to give us the fade. You can use your finger if that's easier for you. But the stylus is great for painting on your screen. So that's giving us a background, folks. Simple blue sky. Let's add some distant mountains, okay? But this is where things get a little bit more interesting because we can do this on a separate layer. Within a picture, you can have several layers. Think of layers of clothing. So you've got your underwear, which is this layer here. You then add the trousers or the shirt, you then add the jacket or the or the jumper. Layers of clothing, layers of picture. Why do you want layers? We'll talk more about layers in future lessons, but what it means is you can do something and think, I don't like it. What I'll do is I'll delete the layer. You can get rid of it. There's lots of things you can do with layers. That's just one example. Just to quickly mention, if you do something by mistake, like that, and you start panicking, this little button here looks like a little squiggle on the right hand bottom right hand corner of the screen is undo, redo, undo. Great little thing. Layers, let's add a layer. Bottom right button, it'll say number one on it. Click it and you get the layers palette. Number one is what you've just done. Click the plus button in the corner to add a second layer. What we can do then is we can go for like a bit of a gray. So I'm gonna choose a gray. Make sure the opacity is relatively low-ish, just over halfway. Brush size, I'm going to come down to about 150. And then I'm going to paint in. See, that's too light, it's not working, so I'm going to undo. I'm going to go back and increase the opacity. Try again, that's better. I'm going to keep painting this. I'm going to reduce the brush size. Reduce the brush size some more. Remember you can pinch to zoom at any time. I'm 
So it's given us, albeit crude, a basic mounting. Now I'm going to take that all the way to the bottom. And then I want to have a look at this. I'm going to say to myself, well actually, you know something? That's a little bit too dark. It's a little bit too dark for what I want on this picture. Can I weaken it? Can I reduce it? Well, if it was a painting, a watercolour painting or an oil painting, of course you'd have to paint it again. But on the iPad, oh, that doesn't stop us. Because on the iPad, you can go back to your layers palette bottom right button. Make sure you're working on the layer because you can choose either layer. And then this slider here at the bottom right is the opacity. You can simply weaken it. So it now goes see-through. Excellent. Let's add another layer, folks. Layer 3. We've got the same colour. We've got the same brush. Let's just add... In fact... Let's undo that and let's creep in a little bit of green, dark green. So I'm swinging the shape round to the green, but quite a dark green. Crease the brush up to about 50 and then I want to add a line of green. You can pinch to zoom and also move around with the two fingers as well. So that's given me that little bit of a meadow. Now it could have been a bit brighter at the bottom, so let's bring it up a little bit, back to the colour in the square, bring it up towards the warmer colour. Can you see it's put the brightness in? Now that's quite heavy. How do we blend? Blending is an important technique. Let's get a bit closer in. Click on this, reduce the opacity like you did with the sky. And now, of course, you can do a little bit of uh, blending. Lower it some more until it fades in to the area. So you can see that's given me that little bit of a meadow. Now those mountains are looking a little bit flat at the back. So let's go back into layer two and let's use some of the same color. How do I get that same color? It's not an easy thing to do, you might think. Well, it actually is in brushes because you can press and hold your finger over this mountain, don't let go of it. And wherever you touch is the color you are selecting. So I'm using this kind of gray color here. So that's giving me the same color. Click on the color picker in the corner and I'm going to make it a bit darker not much and put the opacity just about a third of the way up let's say we've got some light coming in from the right hand side there let's go a bit darker with that folks I want to be able to see this let's go let's increase the opacity some more and some more this is the way to use brushes keep experimenting there you go, it's adding me a bit of darkness. Let's make the colour even darker. There we go. Can you see now how I'm putting a couple of shadows? And because I'm working on layer two, it doesn't paint over the top of the green meadow. Let's go a bit darker again. So we're almost in the blacks now. Because the opacity is not full, it's still nice and soft. But we can increase the opacity to make it darker. Put the opacity on full. Keep adding the layers and layers of colour. If you need to blend, reduce the opacity and then spend a few moments blending the edges away. Just to finish off, I'm going to add one more layer. So work on the top layer, because remember the top one is your jumper, that's the outer piece, that's the piece you see. Click the plus. Let's reduce the brush size down quite a way. Let's change the brush. Let's click on the actual brush stroke here, bottom left. Look at the presets. We'll stick with presets for the minute. Look for something that might look a bit like a tree. So this one here will work for me. I want to choose a dark green from the colour picker. With it. an opacity... No, fairly strong but a small size now you don't know what's going to happen until you try painting so you may need to change the settings I've zoomed in close to this area and I want to twist in that colors too light so I want to undo make the color darker then I want to go back in again and I'm literally twisting in a bit of a distant field Increase the brush a little bit there. Add a couple of rows of these, a couple of lines coming off to the side. 
Now bear in mind because I'm zoomed in fairly close to this, it's going to look a little bit as though you filled the screen, but when you zoom out you'll see that you've not. <laughs> so just bear that in mind, it does happen. I've, I teach workshop days and demonstrate the iPad art and it's something that gets people, so just be a little bit cautious about that. Let's reduce the size or the opacity a little bit just to put some shadows on. So just a few flicks underneath. But you can see how it's creating something there. This is purely and simply a lesson to give you the basics folks. This is a completely never painted before. What I'm doing now is I'm using the same brush slightly bigger and just adding a bit of darkness or even a bit of texture to the actual grassy meadow. And if we go into the layers palette, see the eye next to the layer, you can turn those off if you don't like them, or you can turn the grass off, looks like a snow scene then. So it's really interesting how it works folks, and you'll soon be creating wonderful works of art, the likes of this wonderful sunset, or this autumn woodland. Follow this course on Watercolor TV and I'll take you through every single step. If you come back to your picture, let's exit the app, just click on the app, it will nine times out of ten present you with this thing called gallery. Click on the painting and then it says swipe to paint. This play button by the way, if you press the play button, it's recorded what you're doing and it's playing it back. So every brush stroke has been recorded, but it plays it back at high speed. Here come the trees. Swipe to paint, and away you go. I'll see you next time. <laughs>